there's pastel stuck in my, my sharpener. <laughs> Do you want to know how to get into art, but you have no idea where to start? <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. Look at the art world. There is an infinite amount of styles and artworks and mediums and finer that you get to work with. It is pretty overwhelming, especially when you yourself are just a little baby artist. Little, little Kate would have loved to have somebody guide her through art. Trust me, it would have been an amazing, helpful thing to have. If only YouTube was a thing back then. Ah! My goal is to get you to the level you want to be as an artist as quickly as possible without sacrificing the things you need to learn on the way. I'm going to tell you, there are mistakes that you need to make in order to learn the skills you need. There are other mistakes that are just not needed. <laughs> The biggest takeaway that you need to remember today is something. I don't remember it. Hang on. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about the biggest challenge you're gonna overcome as an artist, especially as a beginner. And it all starts with failure. Ah, oh, failure. The one thing in art that we're terrified of and the one thing in art we try to avoid and the more we try to avoid it, the more it happens. My chair is stuck on the rug. So let's start with failure, which failure itself is something that should not be feared in art. Failures really are just learning experiences. That's it. Some things are gonna work and some things are not gonna work. And you're gonna figure it out either really quickly or it's gonna take some time. <laughs> the biggest thing about failure though is that there is no way to avoid it in art. At some point or another, you're gonna fail. And I don't say that to discourage you. I hope it can be an encouragement to you because if you already know you're gonna fail, then there's just nothing to fear. So why are we fearing failure? Well, why don't we talk about that while we draw a little bit? Remember how I said that failure's gonna happen no matter what, especially when it comes to art? Well, there are plenty of times that I have failed for sure. It could have been as simple as using the wrong color in the wrong area, or as damaging as putting way too much water on my watercolor paper and forming a hole in the paper. Either way, both situations had one thing in common. I had to learn something. I think as artists, we tend to put a little bit too much pressure and emphasis on the fact that we need to be perfect, which in suit doesn't leave any space for learning. You see, learning and improvement can only thrive under conditions that allow failure to be a thing. You may feel like you're making a lot of mistakes right now. And as a beginner, you are gonna make a lot of mistakes. So good job being vigilant. <laughs> oh boy. And as time comes, and as you gain more confidence in your style and in how, you're, how you, and, and, <laughs> and in your sketching skills, you're gonna become more confident and be able to overcome failure faster. Speaking of learning, learning is a pretty cool thing. Now you may be asking yourself, but there's so many things to learn. How will I ever figure out what I'm supposed to do first? All right, <laughs> let's start with something really easy, like holding your pencil. I know, I know what you're gonna think. You're gonna be like, how could you not know how to hold your pencil? Well, you would be shocked at the amount of people who don't know how to hold their pencil as an artist. So we're gonna make sure that we're all on the same page here because we're all learning together that you're gonna have the proper grip for your pencil. This here is a pencil. If you're not familiar with them, don't know how to help you on that. We've talked about this before. There are three grips on the pencil itself, all right? Number one is way, way up close like this or a little bit back like this. This one's really common with beginners, especially younger artists. The second grip, which is more commonly used by gesture drawing artists, is the one that's all the way back here, like this. Now this one, you get a lot more motion in with it, but you can lose a lot of control and a lot of pressure with it. If you're not careful, your pencil can just easily fly out of your hand. Now I'm not going to because the last time we let a pencil fly out of my hand, we lost it. That wasn't on purpose, but that's a great bit. <laughs> Lastly is the grip that you should be using whenever you're sketching, which is this middle grip right about here. Just like as if you're writing with the pencil, but you wanna make sure that you're kind of backed up on it. This is why having a pencil with a good length to it, one that isn't super duper tiny, is important. I feel like the biggest lie that we're told in life is that we, in order to be good at something, we have to have a natural given skill at it or a natural given talent at it. Which honestly, having a natural given talent just gives you a little bit of a leg up on the competition, makes you be able to learn it faster and also motivate you. But any skill can be learned as long as you have the passion to learn it. As long as you have the passion to learn it, you can master it. Tip number three, I feel like is a big one that I see end up a lot in my comments and that's comparison. 
Comparison is when you compare one thing to another. As artists, it's easy for us to admire other artists and be amazed at what they're able to create. But if we're insecure in ourselves, that, that admiration can slowly turn into comparison. And that type of comparison is when we're trying to seek the approval of others. Have you ever shared an artwork or shown someone an artwork and waited for their reaction? Maybe you were just waiting for them to go like, wow, or that's amazing, or wow, you did so good. But instead you got, eh. you know, how would that make you feel? Especially when all you put all your worth into what other people think of your artworks. It's not that we need it, it's that we want it. We wanna to prove to people what we can become and what we're able to do, and that's great. The problem is, is whenever you allow that motivation to become the best person you can be, and you pour 100% of your focus into gaining the approval of others, that's where the issues arise. You do not need the approval of others to prove the fact that you're an amazing artist. Remember, you are uniquely made. So comparing yourself to others, you're just gonna end up failing. And we all know what happens when we let failure control us. If you were paying attention in the first section, you would know. <laughs> Overall, remember, you're gonna stumble, you're gonna fail, you're gonna have to learn, and sometimes you're gonna have to give yourself a heart check when it comes to comparison. But in the end, you're gonna become something amazing. You're already taking the steps that you need to become the best artist you can be. And I've walked the path that you're beginning. So allow me to help you. Let's work together. I'm gonna teach you and you're gonna show me what amazing art you can create because I love seeing it. <laughs> and we're gonna create some pretty amazing things together. So grab your sketchbooks and sharpen your pencils and get out there and be creative. <laughs>